Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, let's do a quick intro here to the concept of automation and more specifically automated attacks. Uh, I want to invite you guys to go ahead and watch this if you wish at an accelerated speed and also um, many of the uh, homework problems that you're asked to uh, fill out very directly reference what we are going to go over here. So uh, feel free to have uh, that Google form uh, open in a separate window and uh, fill things in as we cover them. So uh, to start with, some thoughts on automation generally. One of my favorite uh, computer science professors had this saying that's just etched into my memory, and I think it's a really good one, so I wanted to share it with you. And that's simply that cyber is automation. So uh, we're, uh, as aspiring cybersecurity professionals, we're considering things on a, on a very, uh, uh, in great depth and specifically as they apply to security and vulnerabilities and exploits, but even more fundamentally, our entire field is the result of attempts at automation. Whether we're talking about developing self-driving cars or managing electrical grids or just having uh, you know, computer networks that perform any of the long list of tasks that uh, computers and distributed computing uh, do for us today, all of the issues that we consider uh, in relation to cybersecurity arise out of this uh, fundamental drive to automate systems. So it's worthwhile, I think, to just think a little bit about you know, what automation really is and what uh, some of the fundamental implications are uh, for uh, uh, automation as a concept. So to, um, let's give a little thought here to why is automation desirable? Well, there is a pretty long list. I'm sure you can come up with a lot of great ideas, but four sort of key ones that I think it's it's worthwhile to uh, to hit on here are number one, it reduces human error. A lot of times we want to get humans out of the equation because if we can get a machine to do a task, uh, we can reduce the error rate. Um, also, critically, uh, when you automate things, oftentimes the speed of the process improves, and additionally, the scale of the process improves. Um, and then finally, it frees people uh, from dull and repetitive tasks and allows people to work in a more uh, creative capacity. Um, but, and all of those things are great upsides. We live in a world right now that's being you know, just completely transformed by automation. And we're really just at the at the tip of how much profound change automation is going to uh, you know, have on the world. And there are a lot of upsides to that. But what are the downsides of automation? A couple of things I think uh, we want to keep in mind are, number one, that machines, even though they can do all these great things for us, they don't have any common sense. They interpret everything completely literally. So when we design uh, uh, approaches to automation, um, you know, it's really easy to create a system that we think makes sense because we, you know, it makes sense to us when we design it. But when you consider all of the the literal possible inputs to that system, uh, sometimes machines can't can't handle every single case, and it's hard to anticipate every uh, case that you need a system to respond to. And then, in, in addition to all of those. Uh, in, in improvements in scale that we can achieve through automation. One of the downsides is when you have machines that control really scaled up processes, when you have some of these design errors that don't anticipate uh, possible um, uh, cases that the system has to uh, uh, consider, then that that can have a huge and vast consequence. If you've got one system that that you know is running something very large and there's a problem with that 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 fundamental design error can now affect things in the world today all you know all across the world and can really bring things to a grinding halt so um, that's kind of a you know a couple of things to think about of uh, you know with regard to automation generally now let's consider here uh, what the role of automation is uh, in the field of cybersecurity so um, there are a lot of defensive applications of automation, and those, I think, primarily arise out of the reality that when you're working on the defensive side of things, you have to deal with huge uh, volumes of data. So we have uh, 
automation, you know, automated tools like intrusion prevention and detection systems to help us deal with just the, you know, when we're when we have an internet facing uh, network or, or, or system, um, there's a lot of potential traffic that has to be uh, considered and, and all the rules that govern what goes in and out of that system. You really need that to be automated just because of the, the massive uh, uh, volume of traffic. Also specifically, you know, uh, analyzing that traffic, there might be a bunch of different reasons why we need to analyze uh, traffic. We might need to be looking for anomalies and um, just the huge volume of data that we have to consider means we really need an automated approach to handle all of that. Um, another couple of um, uh, applications on the defensive side are malware detection. So that's uh, everything from your, your antivirus. I mean, you can imagine how impossible it would be for a human being to you know, check all the files on a machine to determine whether they've been uh, corrupted or whether they're, um, you know, some sort of malware is present. And then finally, um, all of these uh, machines in our networks and and automated systems they generate huge volumes of uh, reports and log data. So we depend a lot on the defensive side on what we call SIMs or security information and event management systems. And these are uh, uh, software systems that in an automated fashion aggregate all of our um, uh, feedback from the devices on our networks and in many cases generate uh, notifications if there's something uh, anomalous that we need to pay attention to. And uh, another you know, sort of key concept for why we use automation on the defensive side is to uh, increase the speed and scale of repetitive tasks. So a common um, example of this would be the vulnerability scanning. Uh, you have software and tools that uh, will look at all the devices on your network and run through all the open ports on them and see if the, the devices on that network are vulnerable to a list of known exploits. And you guys in the other section you're doing on uh, on red teaming on um, uh, may get some sort of concept of this, but you can imagine if you're dealing with a really large system, you kind of need to automate that uh, search for vulnerabilities. It's not really feasible to get uh, uh, a human being to go through all the potential uh, devices that could have a vulnerability. So on the offensive side, and this is getting closer to our goal of talking about automated attacks, uh, automation has a really big role in, again, increasing the speed and scale of uh, repetitive tasks. So um, most commonly, we think about uh, automated uh, attacks and automation on the offensive side uh, having a huge role in what we call denial of service attacks or DOS attacks. And these are attacks that directly compromise that availability pil pillar of the CIA triad. So I think we've covered that in some of our uh, intro materials in preparation for this hackathon, but it's useful to think about uh, cybersecurity in, in sort of three broad categories, confidentiality of data, integrity of data, and availability of data. So if you can uh, increase the speed of sc and scale of what you're trying to do on the offensive side um, through an automated approach, a lot of times it's very uh, uh, useful in, in doing a denial of service attack. Um, but on the offensive side, just on just as on the defensive side, you're doing vulnerability scanning to try and uh, discover what your vulnerabilities are so that you can uh, you know, patch them before someone can take advantage of that. On the offensive side, you may be doing vulnerability scanning or your adversary may be doing vulnerability scanning to find out what they can attack on your system. And doing that in an automated fashion is really crucial just because of the huge uh, number of potential attack vectors that need to be considered. Um, and then a couple of uh, sort of specific uh, areas in which automation gets used that might seem familiar to you are uh, large-scale social engineering. So uh, spam is uh, generated usually in an automated fashion. It would be uh, not really feasible to do spam if you had to type out each of the uh, uh, spam emails and send them out to all the different uh, uh, people that you want to try to to do uh, phishing or to deliver an exploit you know, via spam. Um, so automation is quite useful in, in that sense. And then also, again, um, uh, large-scale execution and propagation of exploits. So you could think of a computer virus that self-propagates like a worm as being an example of automation. You only have to, as the uh, individual, find one initial uh, attack vector, and then you get that uh, virus into a system, and it will 
bounce its uh, you know its own way around the system without you having to do any more work. And then also uh, a really key again to this idea of denial of service attacks is the idea of a, a botnet, and that'll be you know something we'll cover in a couple of slides in a little more depth. So uh, we talked a little bit on the last slide about a denial of service attack. So what is that really? It's an important uh, term to, to know. Many of you may already be very familiar with this, but if you're new to this field, it's an important uh, concept to hit on. So a denial of service attack is really any attack that compromises the availability. Again, that's one of our CIA uh, you know, pillars of our CIA triad. Any attack that compromises the availability of a system or information. So that's really quite quite broad. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, inadvertently, we may carry out denial of service attacks on ourselves if we try to, uh, you know, install a patch on a system or do a operating system update that all of a sudden renders some software that we need to use inoperable and all of a sudden we can't access the data we need. We've, we've DOSed ourselves. That's a, that's a, on the IT uh, side of things, that's a constant um, uh, uh, problem that you try very hard to avoid, but it happens. Um, but, um, but really just anything that uh, takes a system offline or prevents access to information is a denial of service attack, you know, um, by definition. But most commonly when we talk about uh, denial of service attacks, in, in in sort of common parlance that that's most often referring to attacks where you take a system down by overwhelming it with a flood of traffic. And um, a lot of times that traffic is generated in an automated fashion uh, by a group of devices that's controlled by the attacker. And this um, system where you have a group of devices working in parallel to generate traffic to take a system uh, down, that's called the distributed denial of service attack. So the, the acronym here is DDoS, and DDoS is probably, you'll probably hear that more than you hear DOS uh, used. But then it, and another key concept here is that this group of devices that's being used is commonly called a botnet. So what is a botnet? Okay, the name really says it all. Uh, it is a group of devices under the control of one user. Uh, if you want to break the name down a little bit, bot comes obviously from robot, but that itself is derived from the Czech word uh, for slave, which is robotnik, and that's sort of uh, descriptive. And net obviously comes from network. So you think of a, a network of, of slaves. You have one, uh, you know, bad guy who's controlling the, uh, the network, and he can get all of those uh, slave machines to do whatever uh, malicious task uh, the the you know the adversary is trying to to achieve. So um, it's important to realize that uh, sort of historically the definition of a botnet usually just kind of referred to computers, but in this day and age, uh, uh, this can be any device that connects to the internet to the internet site and generates web traffic, and uh, that includes devices like webcams, televisions. Uh, you know, in the era we live in right now, where we're constantly bringing more and more devices. Uh, online. Uh, the phrase for this is uh, Internet of Things or IoT. Um, we have devices like refrigerators or toasters or Fitbits. All kinds of things are uh, potentially capable of generating web traffic. And oftentimes uh, today, if you want to, if someone wants to build a botnet uh, to generate, you know, traffic for a DDoS attack, they'll seek out these sort of IoT devices because the security um, on those devices is a lot weaker and they're easier to compromise and incorporate into a botnet. Um, some of you guys may remember within the last couple of years, there was a massive uh, DDoS attack on, uh, on that took down like Amazon Web Services for the better part of a day. And most of the devices on that were webcams. That was the Mirai uh, botnet. And so um, the Internet of Things security is a real uh, concern. Um, but botnets themselves, again, automation is this concept that just pops up everywhere. Botnets themselves, of course, are created through uh, automated vulnerability scanning, uh, coupled with automated exploit ex execution or self-propagating viruses. So if you want to, if someone wants to build a botnet, it'd be very tedious to go, uh, you know, as an individual and try and find uh, a webcam that's connected to the internet out there somewhere and deliver an exploit to that individual webcam and then go to a different one. Realistically, uh, you have automated, you know, vulnerability scanning that's looking at active IPs and seeing if they're susceptible 
to uh, exploits in an automated fashion and building a botnet that way. Or the self-propagating virus can also be uh, a very useful in a botnet, um, getting it onto one system and getting that system to you know, uh, infect other systems very much like a, a biological vi uh, virus um, can be effective in developing a botnet. So having talked a little bit there and kind of rapidly about some fundamental automation concepts and, and specifically how automation is used in common attacks. Uh, I think it's maybe a good idea to end here with a, uh, just a couple of thoughts on what role automation might play in a hackathon project, because that's what we're doing this preparation for. So um, in the hackathon, you're going to have you know a pretty constrained time period to work in a group on a project that you select. And it might really be a, a good idea given the limited uh, time frame and probably limited access to hardware for, for hacking um, to, to use the hackathon as an opportunity to show off your programming skills or develop, you know, your programming skills. So um, some ideas here, just, you know, kind of considering the idea superficially, maybe your group would want to uh, try and, you know, implement some software that automates uh, a cybersecurity tool that is commonly used like Nmap or T-Shark or, or Metasploit and runs that tool at, uh, at you know, regular intervals and, and analyzes the results of running the tool and then delivers that analysis via email to uh, a system administrator. That might be, you know, a good uh, type of project to work on within this confined time, uh, time frame and really, you know, have a, have a cool project to, to flex your programming skills and show them off a little bit. Uh, a couple other ideas that just came to me off the top of my head are, uh, you know, maybe you'd like to be on a team that implements a program that detects or prevents an automated attack. You know, could you, could you write a program that uses a tool like T-Shark to respond uh, or prevent a DOS attack? Or on the flip side, we talked about how automation, we, very briefly, we mentioned how automation can be used in generating uh, spam to deliver exploits via email or to do phishing. Could you write a, a program that uh, helps to detect spam or phishing by identifying you know, keywords or common misspellings of words that are known to be frequent in spam emails that, that, that does that keyword, keyword detection in the body of an email? That, that could be... You know, kind of a cool uh, project to try and tackle over the day and a half or so that we have to work. Um, I hope this has given you some uh, uh, overview of, of, I think, a pretty interesting and fundamental concept to our field. And I look forward to answering uh, any questions that you guys might have and uh, seeing if you guys decide to choose any projects for the hackathon that focus on automation. Thanks a lot.